divided in by two. The point is that we should get lambda is either um, 6g over 17l or
central marketing is important. This is where our dwell on. Um, I think people can understand the next thing. So let's see. We have two eigenvectors associated with two eigenvalues. The theory tells us that we can therefore write theta and phi are equivalent coordinates equal to that matrix of eigenvectors um, in whatever order, 1 minus 2 and 3 fourths times by cosine of the following kind, C1 cosine of omega 1, now omega 1 is the square root of lambda 1, 3g over L, that's phi 1 and C2 cosine root 6g over 17 L T plus phi 2. So that's what the theory tells us. That's what we derived last week. We just write this out directly. We always simply write theta phi or whatever angular root corners are is equal to our matrix of eigenvectors times by a vector with two cosines inside it which looks like the first eigenvalue corresponding to the first column eigenvector and the second eigenvalue corresponding to the second column eigenvector. That's important. So the one on top here corresponds to the first column, the first column from the second one to the second one. Right. So that's what we can write out. That is as much as we show in last week. What does this mean? What this means, if I write it out a different way, is that this is the same as C1 times 1 minus 2 times by cos of root 3g over Lt by 1 plus C2 times by 3, 4 times 5 of root 6 17 L T plus 5 2. Now, C1, C2, phi 1 and phi 2 are determined by the initial conditions of the system. They are arbitrary constants that will be determined when I start the system somewhere with a certain velocity, then I can solve for these guys. Right. But the point that must be taken home is that the general motion of the system is a superposition of two oscillations. Oh, that's fine. That's fine, yeah. It doesn't actually matter, right? Because by changing phi, I can turn a curve into a phi. But let's be consistent in my curve. Certainly, there's a different value of phi, I should like to find. Um, okay, so let's look at, at, at this. Let's look at each different element. If these things are determined by the initial conditions, then there are initial conditions in which this one is 1 and this one is 0. And there are initial conditions in which this one is 0 and this one is 1. The motion of the system in those two cases, that is known as the normal modes of the system. That's what I mean when I say normal modes. I mean the basic oscillatory behaviors of the system. So let's discuss them. The first one, the first one looks like that. What does this say? It says that theta is rotating at 1 times this oscillation and phi is rotating at minus 2 times this oscillation. So let's, let's try to understand what that means. It means that both angles, both theta and phi, are oscillating with the exact same frequency. The exact same frequency, that's the frequency over there. And they're in the same phase as well. But what's different is only that the one is going forwards and the other one is going backwards or in the opposite direction with twice the amplitude. So let's, let's, let's try and understand what that means. I'm going to use books to represent you know, these, this double pendulum. You can just look at them long ways like this, right? So what this normal mode is, is representing is it's representing this one is doing this, oscillating at cosine. Right? It's a small angle oscillation, it just looks like a cosine. 
to simple thinking that you expect. Now, what's happening in this particular case, 1 minus 2, is that at the exact same frequency, I must get them into the same frequency, this one is also oscillating. But if I attach them and I watch the oscillation itself, this one's doing twice the amplitude in the opposite direction. Okay, that is a physical description of this normal mode. And it looks like this. This one's going this way, this one's going this way, and you draw the arrow twice as long to indicate that this one is moving, this one's moving twice as fast in the opposite direction. But their frequency is exactly the same. In other words, when this one reaches its, its maximum oscillation this way, this one would have reached its maximum oscillation this way. And then they both come back. And then they both come back. So I can set the system up so that its motion will look exactly like this. But there's another normal mode. The other normal mode, I can set the system up so that this one is zero and this one is one. And what does this look like? This looks like they're both rotating again, obviously with the same frequency, definition of the normal mode, all, all coordinates go at the same frequency, in the same phase, but now there's a different set of amplitudes. The first and most important point to notice here is that they're rotating, they're oscillating in the same direction. The second point to notice is that this one has a slightly larger amplitude. So the motion, let's take the proof again, the motion now looks like this. They both swing upwards, but this one swings slightly further. And then they both swing back, but this one swings slightly further. And they both swing upwards, this one swings slightly further, slightly further. So the motion of this normal mode looks like this. Both going in the same direction. This one now, this arrow is slightly longer than that arrow. Whereas this normal mode was, this one going in one direction, this one going in the other direction. This arrow half as long as this arrow. And here is the very interesting thing about normal modes. For these specific initial conditions, we get these exact oscillatory behaviors. For any arbitrary initial conditions, we get some linear combination of this and this. In other words, no matter how I set up my system, if the, if the angles are small enough and we're close enough to equilibrium, the complete behavior of the system of double pendulums will look like some combination of this motion and this motion, just superimposed together. Do you understand that statement? Do you understand small oscillations? And if you understand small oscillations, you are well poised to understand a lot of different physical systems, mathematical systems, when they are going here. Alright, I'm going to start with this.